Yeah. That's what they're going to say when you and I leave and they're left behind. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, snap. And I thought I was a good boy or a good girl. But you can't be good if you're practicing lawlessness. Glory. Hallelujah. Everyone say, I'm a warrior. So we have Holy Ghost training tonight. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We have entered the new season. Praise God. We are on final approach. For departure. <laughs> and Jesus is on final approach for harvest. We have entered the beginning of the final harvest. Isn't that awesome? Phenomenal. Blows me away. That you and I are alive. We're alive. Why did God chose us to come? You can ask him that when you get home. Because I sure don't have the answer. I know he took the foolish <laughs> and confound the wise, right? <laughs> he took a bunch of boneheads and turned them into trophies. That's what he loves to do. <laughs> Praise God. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it, but know this in the what? Last days. Are we in the last days? Yeah, man. In the last days, perilous times will come. We can see perilous times. The reason for this perilous times, I've, um, it, it really hit me because there is revolution going on. I don't know if you know about it, but I, Iran is trying to get liberate, liberated. The people, they are tired of being controlled by these religious nuts. Of course, Obama didn't help by giving them billions of dollars. And none of it went to the people. It went to every terrorist organization in their own selves. So they built more castles, bought more Rolls Royces, and called themselves holy. Holy what? In verse 2, it says, For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, Proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. They'll have a form of religion, godliness, false godliness, but they'll be denying the power who is Christ. And from such people, turn away. Turn away. For these are the sort that come and creep into households and ministries and make captives of gullible men, women, loaded down with sins, led away with various lusts. See, what they do is they come in and make captives of individuals. Why? Because they're captives themselves. Does everybody get it? It says that they're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, captives. So what's a captive? A captive is a prisoner. Amen? Um, and when, you, when a person becomes a prisoner, they become restricted. A prisoner is restricted, controlled, and chained to limitations. So when a person we call captives, it's because they become a prisoner. And when a person becomes a prisoner, they become restricted, controlled, and chained to limitations. When you become a captive... You cannot grow in the right direction. 
You can only increase in deception. I'm going to say that again. When you become a captive, you, can, you cannot grow in the right direction. You can only increase in deception. That's why they're called captives. Again, what is a captive? It's a prisoner. And when you become a prisoner, you become restricted, controlled, and chained to limitations. You cannot grow in the right direction, only increase in deception. So what is our responsibility? It is to liberate the captives. Liberating the captives is what you must fulfill in your mission. No matter how that mission is, its all purpose is to liberate others. But first, we must be liberated ourselves. Because you can't liberate, assist in the liberation because it blocks the move of the Spirit to move through you. In 2 Corinthians 6, These are all fruits of people that have been taken captive. Traitors, headstrong, proud. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Liberating the captives. That's what this whole new season is about, is liberating the captives. Why? So they can become a part of the harvest. In verse 11, O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not what? Restricted. 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 Isn't that a part of captivity? Yes. You're not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own what? Affections or your own desires. Whoa. Now in return for the same, I speak to you as children. Why? Because they can't grow. You also be open. Do not be unevenly yoked. Now he's explaining to them, listen, here's the problem. You're associating with people, places, and things, and they're influencing you that are keeping you captive. Do not be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. For what Fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness. And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? Or what part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, they'll be my people. If they do what? If they come out from among them. Why? Because he knows that they will be influenced. See, one of the things you don't want to do is just to hang around. See, in my life, I don't have friends. I have brothers and sisters. In the world, I have friends. But friends will betray. Amen? Because if they're not unplugged from the world, they're not your brother or sister. They're still in captivity. Therefore, if you'll do this, if you'll come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what's unclean or agree with what's unclean, then I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Again, we see restricted. Restricted is associated with limitations. Why? Because they're prisoners or they're captives, aren't they? And why were they kept? It's by the desires. The first thing that we need to do in a circumstance when a person becomes a captive, and you know that they are a captive, is the first to try to understand that they are influenced. What is the influence? Desires by people, places, and things. No one can be set free from captivity until they desire to break away. The first thing that has to happen in an individual's life is they must have a desire to break away. If they don't want to break away, there's nothing anyone can do. That's in the hands of God then. Amen? Does everybody understand that? So you may know a lot of people, even backslidden believers, that just don't want to break away. 
They're captive. There's nothing you can do. You can pray for them and ask God to draw them. But they've been taken captive. Now, once that desire, because God tugs on the heart, once that desire, or they hit enough uh, reality walls or go to prison enough times and <laughs> whatever, get arrested enough times or whatever it is, and finally, hello, I need to make a change. Then a desire comes. When that desire comes, God begins to do something with them. He begins to bring them to the place of truth. Why? Because only truth can begin to penetrate, which is light. So the first thing that has to happen is there must be a desire to break away. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Romans 12. But until they're not, now they may say they want to break away. They may say they want to change, but they're not doing nothing. They're in captivity still. Does everybody get it? Because if there's really a true desire to want to break away, they do something about it. Every one of us had to do something about it. Romans 12. Liberating the captives. Is everybody there? In verse 1 and 2. Thank you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you what? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. And do not be what? Conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, listen. First of all, there's a desire to break away. When a desire is there to break away, the mind or, uh, of the thoughts says, ask the question of how to. How to. Okay, I want to do something now. How do I do it? How to. Huh. So there must be a, a place where an individual comes to of exchange the thought patterns. In other words, the battle is so strong in the mind that there's got to be a desire to break away. And when that desire comes to break away, the question is always brought by the Spirit of God. How do I change? How do I, how do I change my life? How is this done? And so there must be an exchange to change. So the individual begins to do something. Seek truth. Seek truth. Does everybody get that? What do they do? Seek truth. One of the questions they want to find out is, who are they? Who am I? Why am I here? Where did I come from? Where am I going? Is this all there is to this? There's got to be more to this life that's been given to me. They have questions. You know why? They're looking for answers. That means they begin to seek truth. M most of these questions are delivered by the Holy Spirit, which causes. <laughs> See, because every one of us went through it. We just thought it was our own thoughts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I decided to. You didn't decide nothing. Those influences was, was given to you by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> if you wanted, if you, once a moment you started changing course, that was the Holy Spirit saying, come on, I, I got some words for you. Who are you? I don't know, who am I? Do you know where you are? No, where am I? All of these things that, man, do you know where you're going? No, where am I going? You know, we've, heard about hell we've heard about heaven we've heard about all kinds of other foolish places but we really didn't know so that desire to know begins to increase not even we're not even realizing these things are happening and and another thing begins to happen is you you want to you begin to stay away from certain things you know what i 
Don't ask me why I don't want to do that no more. Why? Because truth starts to come in. When truth starts to come in, it begins to change. It begins to be light. You find yourself becoming satisfied with something. Besides sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> Besides fame, money, <laughs> and everything else. You, you, there's all of a sudden a sense of, gosh, this feels good. I don't have to lie anymore. Because all of mankind hides behind lies. Except for those that are walking with the truth. Then you begin to dislike lies. When I was an addict, I lied like crazy. It wasn't until the point where I realized after I had a lo enough lumps, bumps, wounds, and everything else, prickers, been dragged through the bushes, hit enough bars, locked up enough times, paid enough fines, paid enough attorneys, I said, man, I need to do something about this. I want to change. Of course, the voice that came to me said, show me. Show me you want to change. So God is always looking at that area. He, he implements these questions to you. And in these questions, you begin to seek an answer. Why? He's trying to liberate us. One of the things he's got to do through his word is liberate the captivity of the mind that mind must be liberated because that's where the battle is because you cannot fight mind to mind with the enemy you'll lose you must have the mind of Christ oh glory so what begins to happen the desire to break away will impact the mind of thoughts and the how to's and the questions to finally come to a place of exchange when we want to exchange the thought patterns by seeking truth and you don't even know you're doing this you're just doing it your first desire was god i gotta do something about this you didn't realize all of those questions stay in you who am i why am i here where am i going how do i change second peter chapter two Because God is the one that liberates the captives. Amen? Second Pete chapter 2. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. But there were also what? False prophets among the people. Even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies. Even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be what? Blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. Everyone say deceptive words. Why? Because the moment you begin to turn, the enemy begins to approach with deceptive words, deceptive thoughts. He tries to encourage you to go back to your past. Let me share something with you that never stops. Well, when's it going to stop? Never Never stops. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words for a long time. Their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of the eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example of those who afterward would live ungodly, and delivered righteous Lot, who oppressed, was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked, 
For the righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. Wow. So the battle between the truth and deceptive words, we are constantly battling through education, through social media, through false teachers, false professors. I see all of these professors, these college professors getting on these news and get interviewed. They're morons. I don't know how they, they must have bought their, their certificate because I can't see how they earned it. No comprehendo. They're warped, most of them. So there's this battle between truth and deceptive words from education, advertisements, social media, false teachers, false professors, schools and colleges and news medias and all kinds of stuff, man. In verse 18, it says, For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. So he's always trying to get you to come what? Back. While they promise them liberty, they promise them freedom. They themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into what? Bondage. False promises enticing the flesh, puffing the soul to turn from the truth back into bondage for if after they had escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ they again entangle themselves in in them and overcome the latter end is worse for them than the the beginning so it would have been better for them to not have known the, the way of the righteous than having known it and to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them but it is it is as it happens to them according to the truth proper, but dog returns to his own vomit and a soul having washed of her wallowing in the mire. Again, we see this battle in the mind of the thoughts. The enemy does not stop. He's always trying to bring compromise, complacency, and laziness in the area where a person gets to and they just exchange it and not even knowing they do. Not even realizing they do. Number one is because it's not being taken serious. See, when people have been rescued so many times, they don't take life and death serious anymore. Until finally, they get to a place close to death sometimes to where they realize, wow, I got to take this serious. In 1 Timothy chapter 4. <sighs> Hallelujah. Everybody there? In verse 1, now the Spirit expressly says what? In the latter time, some will depart from the faith. They're going to depart. Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. There it is, real simple. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. What's going to happen is the enemy, he warns us. He warns us about these deceiving spirits, this, un this unseen influence and doctrines of demons and all the other stuff that we've talked about that is always influencing me and you. No matter what movie you watch, no matter what's going on, there's always something that will come to try to influence you. And what happens is the enemy's always trying to um, alter the belief system. If he can get you to compromise your belief system, if he can get you to alter your belief system, something happens. It alters your perception of things. You don't see the way you used to see. 
And you wonder, man, why doesn't that person see what I see? See, there's no longer looking at fruits anymore. There's only looking at fulfillment, self-fulfillment, self-indulgence. There's a look, and, and because they look at that, then they begin to look at offense. They look at criticism. They look at everything else but their own fruit. Because when that begins to happen, blindness becomes, comes back again. So the enemy is always trying to alter the belief system and cause an alter perception. What does this do? It keeps captive. It keeps a person captive in the indulgence of the flesh because that's their only fulfillment because they've lost the fulfillment from God. In Romans chapter 8, Now that they're indulging in the flesh because of being taken captive again, their belief system has been altered, compromised, corrupted, and contaminated. So there's partial truth. This is where a person says, I know the truth, but they can't do it. In Romans 8 and verse 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will what? You will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. For many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Are they? Okay. So when a person goes back into captivity, they're not led by the Spirit of God anymore. For you did not receive the Spirit of what? bondage again to what fear so you got to understand the enemy uses fear to bring an individual back into bondage or a captivity but you receive the spirit of adoption by who you cry out abba father the reason the reality of adoption is because one of the things that begin to happen is your identity gets compromised what gets compromised your identity. If he can compromise your identity, you've already stepped into captivity. Even though you know the truth. Does everybody get it? Even though you know the truth, there are a lot of people out there that are captives. They live in a life of captivity even though they know the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? It says, verse 16, that the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So if you're no longer being led by the Spirit of God, there is no witness that you're a child of God. Why? Because you've lost identity, even though you know the truth. Captivity is taking place. And if children and heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together again the release of the spirit of fear into lives individuals lives brings false protection and carnal reactions it brings false protection and carnal reactions what is it carnal reactions of anger intimidation oppression unworthiness low self-esteem and eventually suicide because that's what the enemy's grand Agenda is for everyone is to commit suicide. That's why you hear about it all the time. Look at how many people, when people overdose, they've actually committed suicide. Because everyone knows the chance they take. When they put that needle in their arm or they hit, do that hit or whatever it is, they know the chance they take. I knew every chance I took every time I went to get high. In fact, they used to ruin everybody else's. I'd say, God, if I die, take me home. <laughs> Dude, what are you saying? I said, man, if I die, I want to go home. But the Lord said, no, you can't come home. And I still did it because I was in captivity, even knowing that if I died, I didn't go to heaven. I was in captivity. Hallelujah. 
2 Timothy chapter 4. The Democratic Party is in captivity. That's why they're called the Democratic Party. They're demonized. These socialistic, communistic, and so forth, false belief systems, they're in captivity. One of the things the enemy loves to do is create religions and bring people into captivity. There's only one way home, and there's only one way who, one who frees you. And that's the one who created you. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Let's speak it together. And I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead as his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. In other words, speak the word, man. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We are there. But according to their own desire, why? Remember the first arena that must happen is a person must break away from his what? Desire. He must have a desire to break away from captivity. What happens here is a person goes back into captivity because the desire has been replaced and they don't even know it. They've compromised it. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Listen, I haven't seen one backslidden believer show up at church right away. Every one of them stays away. They stay away. Why? Because they know the truth and the enemy is now beating them up with guilt, condemnation, fear, anxiety, stress, and all this other stuff. Eventually, he, he's actually trying to convince them to kill themselves because he's convincing them that there's no love there, there's this and that, they've disappointed everyone and whatever. That's his job. And the enemy does it well. He said they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to what? fables, fables, lies. They're going to heap up themselves teachers. So they're going to associate with people. When a person usually backslides, they usually go around other backsliders. Or they seek them out. Why? Because they're trying to find false comfort. And then they blame the church or everybody else for what they've done. Because they, they won't take responsibility because there is no responsibility in captivity. When you're in captivity, everything is brought to you by the enemy. Does everybody get that? It's like being in a prison cell. You get fed there and you get taught there. You are set with limitations. You are restricted and there is no freedom. None. And a person, many people die in that state of being. Oh, hallelujah. So we know here that there's something that's called a key. It's called consistency. I guess we ought to call it consistent key. So a consistent key is to overcome the fallback. The fallback to what? Deceptive desires that come from flawed belief system, that it's promoting flawed perception, creating itching ears of false Appro uh, false approvals. And what does it do? It brings back a person back into captivity. They fall into depression. They fall into all kinds of stuff. Woesy measies. I'm the only one. Oh, the enemy's got them all snared up. Feeding them. Boom, boom. Why? Because if he's got you in captivity, you can't go nowhere. And so the only thing he does is keep feeding that person. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Romans 8.18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Verse 18. 
Romans 8, 18. For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into who? The glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we who also have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and the redemption of our what? Our bodies. Wow. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees because of flawed perception? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance, which means endurance. Because per the perception is flawed, hope is deferred, lost, and exchanged for false hope, a place of captivity. I'll say that again. Because the perception is flawed, it's flawed, hope is deferred, lost, and exchanged for false hope. Now, people have a false hope because they're relying on what they see and not what they don't see. So they're not re relying on the promises of God. Everything must be tangible to them because they can't see spiritually. And that is a place of captivity. Jeremiah chapter 5. Addiction is nothing but captivity. Lust is captivity. In verse 20, please, Jeremiah 5, 20. Everybody okay? Why are we learning this? Because God is preparing us. He's preparing us also how to get somebody out of captivity. There must be first a desire to what? Break free. And of course, people will lie. Yeah, man, I'm, I wanna, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. But they really aren't. See, there's that tendency to use other people, manipulate, to get by. That's called Survival. Surrender, trust God, and say, man, whatever you got, I, I, this life is yours, not mine no more. You know, before my visitation from the Lord, I remember standing out there. And that's what I said to the Lord. I said, do something with this life. Take it. I didn't know you literally was going to. Surprise. Verse 20. Declare this to the house of Jacob and proclaim it in Judah saying, hear this now, O foolish people, without understanding. <laughs> foolish people are without understanding. Who have eyes and not, see not, and who have ears and hear not. Boy, we see that. Why? They're in captivity. They have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Will you not tremble at my presence? who has placed the sand as the bound of the sea by perpetual decree that it cannot pass beyond it. And though its waves toss to and fro, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet they cannot pass over it. But this people have a defiant and rebellious heart. They have revolted and departed. They do not say in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God, who gives rain, both the former and the latter, in its season. Are we in the season of the former latter rain? Yes. He reserves for us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Oh, glory. Do you notice how that the former and latter rain is associated with the harvest? 
Your iniquities have turned these things away. So it stopped it, didn't it? So the, this prevented the former rain, latter rain, and the harvest to come because there was lack of repentance. Your sins have withheld good from you. Your iniquities have turned these things away, and your sins have withheld good from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lie in wait as one who sets snares. They set a trap. They catch men as a cage of full birds. Oh, that's the captivity, isn't it? It's a cage of full humans or bird brains. Even Sweepy's smarter than them. So their houses are full of deceit. Therefore, they have become great and grown rich. They have grown fat. They are slick. Yes, they surpass the deeds of the wicked. They do not plead the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy they do not defend. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? Shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? Of course he will. <laughs> of course he will. Wicked is a representation of stewards of darkness. Wickedness. Wicked individuals are called stewards of darkness. They enslave mankind reject by causing mankind to reject the escape of captivity with truth. Again, they give them religion to keep them in captivity, but they don't give them the truth that releases them from captivity. That's why you see all this religious stuff going around. Hatred is behind most of the religiosity or false humility. But people are now in demon management and not in freedom. Second Peter 2, 12. Second Peter 2, chapter 12, let's speak it, uh, hallelujah, I'm going to go to, J uh, yeah, Second Peter 2, chapter 12, okay. But these like brute, nat uh, natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed speak evil of the things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who counted pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes, carousing in their own deception while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and can't, they cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. Man, they know when a person is unstable. That person that's unstable is in captivity. Double-minded. Multiple personalities. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are accursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Baal, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but he was rebuked by his iniquity. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrains the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds carried by a tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. Well, they promise them what? Freedom or liberty. They themselves are slaves of corruption by whom a person is overcome by him. Also, he is brought into what? Bondage. Bondage. Again, enticing unstable souls. These are unconverted souls because they're unstable. There hasn't been a full conversion yet. They are not able to stand because of the lack of abiding. They are self-willed, they're prideful, and they are arrogant. And they are in captivity. They pride themselves on themselves. They don't give glory to God. They pride themselves on themselves. This is what I can do. Look what I've done. It's the eye syndrome. 
Lucifer fell under that. God kicked him out. 1 John chapter 4. Oh, this is all preparation. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. It says, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Now, do you grab hold of this? That's full identity. That's full identity. It's no longer looking at yourself. It's looking at him. And it says here again, because as he is, so are we in this world. Man, if we could just hold on to that. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out what? Fear. Because fear involves what? Torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this is the commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Perfect love casts all fear. One of the things the enemy tries to do is replace love with lust. That's his job. Why? So a person stays in captivity. Listen, they lust for one another even when they say they love one another. It's a difference. There's a difference. That's why people uh, stalk one another because it's lust. That is not love. Stalking is lust. It's not love. Love is willing to let go. Lust can't. See, because when you're in love with God, you can let go of everything. But when you're in lust with something, you can't let go. Amen? Does everybody understand it? But it says, perfect love casts out all fear. And the enemy uses fear to bring us into bondage. Fear. Fear of not fulfilling. Fear of failure. Fear. Some people fear success. Fear. Fear, how am I going to pay the bills? Fear of this. Fear of that. Always fear. Fear nullifies trust. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. These are areas where we've got to look at. Remember, what's the first thing we want to be able to do with an individual is to influence them that they have a desire to what? Break away. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.5. Okay. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know that what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. So you got to remember something. This is powerful because people are... It's all, all kinds of crazy thoughts about this. And I truly believe in all, with all of my heart that he is speaking not only the Holy Spirit, but the body of Christ that is here restraining. Because it's the Holy Spirit that uses the body of Christ to restrain. And it says here, when we are taken out of the way, that the lawless one will be revealed. Somebody get it? He will not be revealed until we are taken out of the way. And we may know who he is, but he won't come forth to reveal himself until we are taken away. He can't because we are the restrainers. Everyone say, I'm a restrainer. 
says, Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. For me and you, it's important that we understand this. And with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish. Why? Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be what? Saved. You and I must love truth. We must love the truth. If you don't love the truth, then you're in captivity. Because only loving the truth keeps you out of captivity. Look at this. What happens? Okay, because they rejected the love of the truth. They didn't receive it. They rejected it. And what happened? For this reason, God will send them what? Strong delusion. Will that keep them in captivity? Yes. That they should believe the lie. That they all may be what? Condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They're doomed. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth and love of the truth, to which he called you by our gospel for obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by epistle. Rejecting the love of the truth because they didn't love truth. They were in captivity. Remember, truth says it sets you free. You must practice. See, you can know the truth but still be in captivity. It's not until you put truth into practice that you can come out. It's like a key. You may have a key, but not use it. And not until you use it can you open the door. That's what John 8 says. Let's go there for a second. John 8. John chapter 8. Verse 31. Hallelujah, are you ready? Let's speak this so we can eat this. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if, if, that means you've got to cooperate, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. So there's a maintaining, isn't there? Constant. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. Boy, were they deceived. And how can you say you will be made free? And Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Even though he spoke to them, even though they knew about all, they rejected it because they were in captivity. The love of God Almighty was manifested right in front of them. He radiated love, but their hearts were so hardened, they couldn't accept it. They were so bound by religiosity and traditions of men Anyone that came against their traditions was cast out, counted a blasphemous, needed to be killed and murdered because they had a different opinion. That's called religiosity. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further here. Let's go to... Uh, that. Uh, John 14. Liberating the captives. If you're a captive, you're a prisoner. If you're a prisoner, you're restricted. You're controlled and you're under set limitations. That means the enemy has you. You may think you're free, but you're not. 
you're in management. That's not freedom. That's captivity. John 14, verse something. Verse 6, Jesus said to them, I am the what? The way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for through me. There it is, simple. He is the way, the truth, and the life. One of the things we want to be able to do again is to get an individual to change the desire to break away. What we do then is we bring them into the place of truth. The next thing, once truth does, it leads a person into God's presence. Does everybody get it? Without truth, you won't be led into God's presence. So that's why the word of God is always leading you into God's presence. It's not only feeding you, but it's leading you. And once you get into God's presence, there's a tremendous exchange. There is fulfillment. Ephesians chapter 2, and then one more scripture. Liberating the captives. As soldiers, that's our responsibility. What are we trying to do? Just like John the Baptist was preparing a way for Jesus. You carry Jesus in you now. So that's why the Christ in us is greater than he is in the world. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So the Jesus in you wants to touch somebody. The Jesus in you wants to love somebody that hasn't been loved. The Jesus in you wants to comfort someone that hasn't been comforted. And the Jesus in you wants to release the truth to someone that has been taken in captive. Verse 4. Ephesians 2, verse 4. Let's speak it. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. For by his plan, you have been what? Amen. Saved. That's what grace is. It's God's plan of escape. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift from God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You can't walk in them if you're in captivity. Again, many people are in captivity and don't even know it. They don't even know it. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Is everybody there? Nevertheless, when one does what? Turns to the Lord. It's a desire to break away. From what? Captivity. When one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So in this area, when there's that desire to break away, a person begins to realize, because what begins to come to him is conviction. Gosh, Lord, I don't know why I'm sorry for what these things I've done. And you, you don't, you're not even saying Lord yet. I, I, I remember coming home and changing stuff. And, and I wasn't, I, I just got out of detox. But God began to draw me. In fact, the first thing I did was threw the girl that was in my house out. I said, this ain't right. And don't ask me why, because I don't even know. This has got to go, 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 and this has got to go. And I don't know why, but it does. It wasn't until a month later that I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But see, he already started to draw me as he drew all of us. He began to put those questions in me. Who am I? Why am I here? What's your future? What are you, you going to live like this the rest of your life? Man, I used to hear these things. You think you're going to live long living like this? Snap, no. 
And what are you going to do? I'm going to give you my life. Okay, you want to be free? Yes. Show me. Okay, what? Find truth. I'll put you in a place. I'll show you what to do. Just do it. Trust. See, so many times people have so many questions, they want the answers before they even step. That ain't going to happen. You first got to break away, especially when you find yourself going back into captivity. Captivity of the mind, going back into fear. Look at the enemy will use whatever he can to bring you back. That's his job. His job is a constant to bring you back. That's all he's trying to do. Put you back in the cage and then feed you whatever he wants to feed you. Amen? But where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. And you and I are called to be free. But don't misuse it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't misuse it. You do. The enemy will step right in. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. And we are honored and blessed. We ask that you continue to empower us and bring revelations to us, Lord. Keep us thirsty and hungry to constantly be fed. And Lord, create in us a love for the truth. Because if we love the truth, we love Jesus. And if we love Jesus, we love the truth. So, Lord, establish in each and every one a refreshing of new love for truth in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.